Listen, I I um I hated this format when the red flag came out because uh, I was pretty sure we were out. There was no way I didn't see a clear path to uh, to making it in. And you know when it comes down to it, uh, you know this team, everybody at Junior Motorsports, Jim Pullman, um, Eddie DeHaan, everybody that is a part of this this Hellman's uh, Camaro team. I can't even begin to describe tonight. Um, you know the effort on the radio, the, those guys trying to keep me in the game. You know me being frustrated. I, I think as good of a season as we've had, and and to be in the position that we've been in. I mean, Jim called a hail mary on a on a pit strategy, and he said, "Look, bro, I know this isn't what you want to do, but he said this is what we had to do." And when we started falling back, I'm like, man, you know, I don't know what to expect. But um, that last restart, I mean. Heck, I thought I crashed myself on the front straightaway coming to the white. I didn't even realize John Hernan was outside of me the way that he was. And I about put myself in the wall. That's a good sound, by the way, right there, that clock dinging. Um, not sure that I'll agree with that at 3 o'clock in the morning. But, um, you know, just what an unbelievable night. And then, listen, Sheldon, Austin, John Hunter, Sammy Smith. I mean, Sammy Smith did an amazing job today and did all the right things. You know, it just... The way the race played out at the end there, it, it was it was wild. Um, I locked my elbows off at of turn four, and I thought, well, we're either going to win this thing or I'm probably going to end up upside down. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was hoping that maybe – I knew Sheldon was going to stay in the gas. At, at the point of how he entered turn three, I knew he was going to be in the gas. So my only shot at that point was to maybe get turned across in front of him. And, and um, But what, a, what an incredible – what an incredible evening. And um, my little girl, I got my phone out right now. My little girl is playing for a championship in softball. She got her, she got a home run tonight and uh, they're leading 19 to one. Um, I, I feel like that's pretty good. They got to finish. They got two outs in, in the bottom of the inning, but um, what a day for the Allgaier clan. It's, it's, it's truly been special. And, and this is a team, this is a team win. Cause, cause trust me, Justin Allgaier was not, um, was not the guy that won the race tonight. The, the guys behind me were the ones that won it. So really proud of the team effort that we put in. Nathan Song with the podium finish. Justin, when you crossed the line there, did you think you had it right away, or did it kind of take a minute for you to realize that you had won the race? <laughs> I, I thought I had it. And then um, obviously there was carnage on the front straightaway, and, and I'm, I'm glad I came around. Um, I probably I, – I don't know. At that point I didn't know what to expect, so I, I kind of weaved my way through there. But, you know, the first question was, is everybody all right? You're right? Um, you know, that was a heck of a hit for some some folks on the front straightaway. And then they told me to stop, and they're like, hey, we don't know who won. So then, you you know, like that's twice now this year I've second-guessed whether we came across the line as the winner or not. And so they said, don't move. Um, not an ideal situation, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, but but when they finally gave me the all-clear and, and, and Dave Burns gave me the thumbs up and said we had actually won, what an incredible, what an incredible uh, just emotion that went through. Um it, it truly was special, and you know, you never know in, in the in, in the way that these races play out. And I mean, shoot, we still got to go through tech, right? Anything can and will happen. We're good. Hey, we won a race, all right. Um, you know, listen, this is twenty three, I think twenty two. Came with twenty three. I've never, I've never left a win, and I sit back and I just, it's surreal. Um, it's surreal to be in the situation that we're in. It's surreal to have the the team behind me that I do. Um, it's 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 truly incredible, and I, I'm I'm blessed to even be here doing this, and proving that we still got a little bit of fight in this, and and we got a lot of momentum on our side. Excuse me, we had a great qualifying every yesterday. We had a great practice, and we executed tonight. And even when all the chips were were on the table, and you thought that thought that it wasn't your day, uh, that 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 last card was the 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 card we needed, and and you know it just. It's really special. And to your point in a minute ago, you're below the cut line for most of this race. So did you feel like you had a car capable capable of capable enough of not just transferring but but winning the race? Yes, um, especially early on, as the sun started to set, you know, our balance kind of went away from us a little bit, and I and I was nervous. Um, you know, you you never know what to expect. And and listen, when the when you come down to the end of these races, and it's a green white checker, especially. All bets are off. All the cards are out there. You, you don't know what to expect. Um, but but I'm proud of this team. I mean, Eddie DeHaan, Jim Pullman, they both were on me lap after lap. You know, Eddie kept saying, this is war. You got to go after it. You got to, you gotta, you know, you got to be more aggressive because he knows that I'm not. Like, that's just not my my trait, right? I'm not going to drive through the bumper of somebody to, to try to win a race. Um, 
uh, tonight honestly was really odd. I mean, the seas just parted and it worked out. But um, when I walked out of here tonight, whether we made it or we didn't, I knew that I, I gave 100%. And I, and I was comfortable with who I was as a person and how I raced when I walked out of here. And it's all I can ask for. All right, we're going to go to Davey Siegel in the back. Davy Siegel with Sirius XM. Justin, was that probably the craziest, most chaotic race that you think you've ever been a part of? Yeah. There's not a lot of other ones that come to mind, I'll be honest with you. Um, there's been a lot of crazy finishes, especially a lot of crazy finishes here. And uh, when I look at, at Martinsville, I, I, I'm a little disappointed that it comes down to a crash, right? Um, because this racetrack is such a cool place and the racing tonight was i mean gloves were off everybody was going for broke you know the the rubber being down the temperature i cannot overstate enough how much fun tonight was even when it wasn't going the way you wanted it to go with the rubber being laid down and the the, the lack of grip i mean we were all sliding around all night long at the break i Heck, I think I burned the brakes off of it ha about halfway through. I had to start moving my brake levers and, and trying to just figure out how to finish the race. And, and you know, what a what a way to finish a race. So, you know, you're definitely chaotic. Listen, they, they work in your favor sometimes, and sometimes they don't. I, I was so frustrated at the restarts tonight because if I took the top, the top jammed up. If I took the bottom, the bottom jammed up. It just never seemed like I could make the right choice. And, um, again, Eddie and... and and, and Jim both were on me. Like, we gotta keep fighting, we gotta keep going, and, and it worked out in our favor, and we got a shot at a championship at a racetrack that we're phenomenal at. I'm excited about next week. It got a lot busier, let me be honest with you. Uh, this week, I'm sorry, Campbell, I'm sorry, but this week got a lot busier, but uh, you know, it's, it's worth it, and it's gonna be a blast. To your point, uh, Jim and Eddie on the radio were egging you on a little bit to not be afraid to use the bumper, be aggressive if you had to, maybe a little bit more aggressive than you're used to and you're accustomed to being. How comfortable were you in a situation like that, kind of quote unquote, doing what you had to do to make it? I wasn't, but they know that. And and that's their way of firing me up and getting me going. Um, listen, you know, I had a great relationship with Jason Burdett for a lot of years and he was the exact same as Jim has been this year and firing me up and, and getting me going. Eddie DeHaunt has been a, a main staple in, in my career for the last number of years. He knows when he knows when I'm down. He knows when I'm up. He knows when he's got to rein me in, and he's he knows when he's got to push me. And tonight, he knew when to push. Um, listen, you know these guys don't get enough credit. I, listen, I, I I get to be the guy that holds the steering wheel, but these guys don't get enough credit for for what it takes to to come here and to be successful and to win these races. And um, it feels great, man. There. There is not a cooler feeling than standing on, on, on that stage in victory lane and, and having everybody around you that you know is, is part of your success it means a lot. All right, we're going to come up front to Bob. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports F2. The first is, can you describe this win in one word? And if so, what is it? <laughs> one word? Relieving. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird, but... I've wanted to win at this place a long time. There's so much pressure and stress on this race, This race, right? Spring race is great because there's no pressure. There's no stress. Like, you just go for a win. Fall race, there's a lot, you know, and, and uh, I envied Sam Mayer all week for coming in here and being locked in. Like, I envied that. Um, but but relieving, knowing that we got two junior motorsports Camaros going for a shot at a championship next week, I can't even begin to describe what this what this men means. Um as you can imagine, Austin Hill wasn't too happy with Sheldon. I'm curious from what you saw, did you see anything that was incredibly, you know, egregious when you're trying to make it to the final four, championship four? Listen, I have a lot of respect for both of those guys, obviously both Chevrolet teammates. Um they both put their 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 they both they both were driving for everything they had. I mean I, I saw Austin push um John Hunter up at one point. Sheldon got me at one point. You know, but I but I think that shows you what an opportunity for a championship means next week, right? Those guys, those guys are two of the most respectful race car drivers on the racetrack, and to go to blows like that, as even as teammates, it it, it just shows you how important these these moments are. Um, you know, Sheldon's obviously not coming back to to RCR next year. 
But but he's going to be equally as tough next year wherever he ends up. Austin's going to Austin's going to be great next week at, at at Phoenix. He's liable to win the race, right? So, you know, I hoped it would happen. You know, secretly you're like, man, if these two run into each other, this is going to be great. But they're probably not gonna. And then they did. And then, like, I had this moment of like, what do I do, right? Because if they crash and I run right into them, I'm gonna look like an idiot, right? But then they kind of moved up the racetrack and I'm like, I'm gonna force it in there. And then Sheldon just hung a left and he was like, I'm gonna try to keep it, you know? And uh, I'm like, man, I, I don't know if this is gonna work out, but I'm just gonna hold my hand straight and, and, and keep the throttle down. And obviously, <laughs> It could have gone either way. I mean, you look at the you look at the photo finish of the at victory lane. I mean, it could have gone either way. But um, you know, I, I don't think either one of them two will will walk out of here not knowing that they didn't give it their all. No different than I am. And and you know, the the highest of highs and lowest of lows is what the sport's really really all about. All right, we're gonna go to Matt Weaver, and then I believe I had a question here in the middle. Go ahead, Matt. Mad Weaver, Sports Knot. You, you said you can't remember a crazier win or a celebration you've been a part of. Arca Toledo 08, is that <laughs> kind of similar? I actually, it's funny. So uh, Jim Pullman's wife, Jackie, oh, we, we stopped on the way coming in here, and um, she thought, she said she thought, she had this like, man, this could work out like Toledo did for the Arca Championship. She's like, but it'll never happen. She's like, sure enough, same kind of thing happened. Um, what's really funny now is you know, I have a great relationship with Scott Speed and Ricky Sinhouse both. I train with Scott Speed and Josh Wise every day when we're at home. Um, you know they, they they've they've done a great job of preparing me for for these moments, and it's so ironic that 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 that, that has kind of bled over into so many points in my career. Um, you know that that championship, those guys have no idea the defining moment it was for me as a person and what it was for my mom and dad as a, as a owners of a race team. I mean, my mom and dad are here tonight sitting back towards the back back there. And I can, I can tell you that there's nothing cooler than having them be a part of this. My wife was here. She literally, uh, my wife or my daughter won the softball tournament, by the way, they, they were the champions, but she left there because she knew how monumental tonight was. And, um, she drove over here to, to be with me. And, and I just, that moment was a defining moment in my career. Tonight, whether people realize it or not, this is a defining race for me. Like every one of these victories has meant something different, and um, I'll cherish every one of them. And then you've kind of been on both sides of the current playoff format, disappointment, celebration, and you might be too close to it now to really be able to, to separate it, but – is there a part of you that recognizes when you're standing in turn one, celebrating with the, the crowd and the fans, how important or special it is for the fans and generating interest and excitement for years to come? So I'm gonna try to pull up this picture right here, if I can get it. I set this photo as my lock screen last year after Phoenix. Um, I probably should have favorited it so that it would have been a little easier to find it, but um, I set this photo of Dale Jr. and I standing in Phoenix. Uh, he gave me a big hug, and I'm pretty sure I was bawling my eyes out, right? Not because not because of anything other than – I don't know if you all can see this or not. This picture is Dale Jr. Um, hugging me around the neck, right? And I set that, photo, that picture as my lock screen because I knew – when we left Phoenix that I didn't have anything left. I mean, I, I did everything I knew how to do and it didn't, it didn't equate into a championship. And I've been here and I've had these moments of like, you, you don't have that opportunity to go on to, to Phoenix. I've been at Phoenix and I've had defeat. Um, I've had a lot more defeat than, than, than joy in this playoff format for sure. But I, I, there is not a moment as a racer that it doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't give you a reason to keep coming back to the racetrack. I mean, listen, if we won every week, if everything in life was easy, it'd be really hard to get excited about doing anything. And I think that that's what makes this format so difficult, but also so exhilarating and fruitful whenever you do win is because like tonight, I'm walking out of here 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I might still be 5'5", five five, but I'm, I'm walking out of here a little taller than I was, right? But, but Sammy, 
Austin, Sheldon, they're walking out of here defeated, right? But I can promise you that when the off season starts, that's their motivation. Now I have to find what what motivates me to do the next one, and and I think that that's really what it what it comes down to. How do you, how you motivate yourself, and and you can let it eat you inside, or you can let it be the the fuel that you need to to go to the next one. And for me, this momentum is fuel, but the defeat would have equally been as much fuel to to be better next year. All right, we had a quick. There you go. Trey Lyle, FrontStretch.com. First question for you, Justin. Is the yoo thing with you and Josh Williams, like, did you, were you expecting that? Are you a big yoo fan? Is that just Listen, the drink um, he had? I don't, I don't know if you guys know Josh Williams the way I know Josh Williams, right? Um, truly one of the most awesome people in this garage area. And he, when I've had really good days, like tonight, he's out there with a yoo right? And I don't know. I don't know where the Yuhu thing came from. He brought me one at Bristol. He's he's. I think Daytona. He he cracked a Yuhu with me, right? Like, those are special moments. But on the flip side of it, the guy has, in my darkest moments of the races, he's been the same guy that's texted me or saw me at the racetrack and put his arm around me. Or you c- listen. We're not like we we didn't grow up as friends. We didn't we didn't we battle each other on the racetrack week in week out. And for a guy to be that guy, you can't ask for better people than that. And uh, he's truly somebody that I'm, I'm really proud of, uh, a good friend, somebody that I'm proud to call a friend. And, and, and I hope, you know, for his sake, I hope he, he gets the opportunity someday to really show how good of a race car driver he is too because I know, I know he's truly an incredible race car driver as well and doesn't always necessarily – I mean, not that he's in bad equipment, but just doesn't necessarily always have the opportunity to show it like, like we all know him as. And, and um, I hope someday he gets that really good opportunity. And obviously, this was your 23rd win in the Xfinity Series. If you obviously win the championship by winning the race next week, you would tie Dale Jr. for career wins in the Xfinity Series. So if you get both those done next week, what would what would that mean for, for you and then, like, the relationship you have with him? Listen, Dale Jr. is Dale Jr. Um, I mean, the guy is truly incredible. He's an icon of our sport and... and to even be in the same conversation is wild to me. I mean, I remember as you know, growing up racing and watching, you know, back then Bush races on TV and and seeing Dale Jr. win races, right? The Ace Delco car and being successful. And I remember watching, you know, him win Cup races. And um, you know, I was a Dale Senior fan, so you know, obviously, I became a Dale Jr. fan to see. To see the success that Dale's had is actually pales in comparison to just the person that he is. And the, the reason why people love Dale is because not because of his, his success on the racetrack. It's because of who Dale is as a person and, and down to earth and just being a great guy. And I think for me, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that I'm even close. Um, even if I were to win and, and win the championship and be tied with him, it still pales, pales in comparison. But, man, it would be cool. And um, – you just seen him on on in victory lane tonight. You know he's genuinely happy that this company is succeeding, and he he. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I loved winning Bristol, but I would have equally have been as happy to run second to Dale Jr. And I thought I was going to for a while, but I think when you when you're around Dale and you you see his invigoration or his passion for the sport, it invigorates you to be better, and um, to even be in that category is is pretty wild and pretty special. All right, we'll take our final question up front here with Lee. To kind of follow up on that, Lee Spencer from Catch Fence. Um, he came in here and he knows that your opportunities are limited to win a championship. And he's been down that path, right? I mean, you know, he had some pretty sporty teammates back in his day too. And, you know, the cup title eluded him, but he, he gets it. You know, he knows that um, – you know, this might be one of those chances. And he, he talked about taking off work next week just so he can, you know, be there to support his drivers. And, I mean, does it get any better than that to know that your owner is, like, all in and, and wants this probably a, as bad for you as you want it yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think that that just shows why he is Dale Jr. and the icon of the sport. I mean – when it's all said and done, when the, if, if the race team were to close tomorrow, 
he's still going to be Dale Jr. He's still going to be successful. He's still going to be that guy. What is what is wild to me is is that he wants it as bad as we do. He wants it as bad for us as we do. He's I mean, last year, like I said, that picture that picture still haunts me, to be honest with you, because I equally as much wanted it for him and for every man and woman that works at Junior Motorsports. You, I watched guys from other teams in our shop this week that have races to win, that have all the you know things going for them. They were down working on the seven car to try to help make sure that we, we got our car together to make sure that we had a best shot that we could at coming to Martinsville and win. This race team embodies Dale's spirit, and he feeds off of that as much as we feed off of him. And and um, listen, there would be nothing better that I can imagine is to to bring a, a championship home for him and Kelly, right? They and and LW. I mean, they Joe Mattis. I mean, Joe's final year at Junior Motorsports. I mean, just oh, there's so many things that would would make this year great. I got to beat my teammate, and Sam is gonna be fantastic next week at Phoenix. No question. Um, I got to beat two other drivers that are going to be f- fantastic next week at Phoenix. You know, all that. All that being said, it, <laughs> there's a good reason why we all want it that bad, and it's it starts from the top and it, it works its way all the way to the bottom. And uh, really, you know, again, I don't know how many opportunities I'm going to have. I'm 37 years old. I'm I I I don't know how who the next one youngest is close to me, but it's probably got to be early 30s. Um, Josh might even be the oldest next one. I think he's like 32, right? So it's pretty uh, pretty wild. So, you know, I don't know how many more I'll have. I've had great partners. You know, Hellman's here, Brant. I mean, Rick Brant climbed the fence with me at Bristol, and, you know, to see that emotion out of somebody that's a, that's a partner on a race car, you know, it, it, there's, there's no words for it. And um, you never know when it's the last race. I can walk out of here tonight and, and never race again. I cherish every one of them. Um, Plain and simple.